Hey everybody, XCI here for a Let's Play of Orchids to Dusk. It's an indie game here. Very quick indie game from what it seems like. Let's click the start, sure. Let's go. Oh, mouse button click, okay. So we are an astronaut crash landing as you can see. There's some loading going on. This is very loud actually right now in my uh, in my headset. Holy smokes. I'll try to fix that in post. So I'm playing uh, pseudo blind here and I, what I mean by pseudo blind is because I've read up on the game just to kind of get a sense of what this was about when I was trying to pick a, an itch.io game to download and play. This is really long and really loud. <laughs> is it stuck? <laughs> is my first question. Can I do anything? Oh! I can at least move this around and entertain myself in a very simple manner. But I honestly don't know what's happening right now. It's very, very long. What are you loading, game? Are you loading assets? <laughs> All right, so there's the sound of absolute. Okay, so we got uh, we got we got look with the mouse. We got walk. Uh, so walk is left click. Walk backwards is right click. Walk straight. How is that different than walk? I don't know, but okay. Double click, and we got save screenshot to desktop and click to continue. Okay. So here we go. We are on the world of. Either the world is called Orchid, or I don't know, but very pretty looking game for sure. There's our crash pod right there. Oh, my dude just sits down if I do nothing. Can I? Oh, there's no WASD. My bad, that's right. It's all mouse driven. All right, so here we go. Here's here's what this game is about, as far as I can tell. And I'm playing pseudo blind, like I said. Uh, what I mean by pseudo blind is the description of the game is that it's a networked wandering experience about an astronaut that crash lands on an alien planet with only a few minutes to live so it's overtly atmospheric as can already be seen i now understand why the audio is so loud is because i didn't change any of the settings i literally just loaded the game and started recording so here we have, uh, I guess, an, an or well, this isn't really an orchid, but it's a little grove of sorts, alien grove here. The music is very pretty. I love simplified graphics like this. I first like fell in love with this sort of style with Shelter. It was the first game I played that was sort of a walking simulator, not really. I mean, this is definitely a walking simulator. But uh, where it had good, like just a, a very simplistic, aesthetically pleasing art style mixed with a very, very soothing audio. Now, the moroseness of this game is, of course, it's the, it's the final line of with only a few minutes to live. So as you can see on the right side, we got our OT, O2, and we're at 73% at this point. And so, I think the purpose of the game is to sort of just experience the the game. If, if I'm going to put that in quotes, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it is a game, but it's... These kinds of games are... Uh, Nivea is another great example, by the way. What is that? Uh, Nivea is another great example of just art. Oh, that's a helmet. That is definitely a helmet right there so sparse but look at all that stuff over there I went I'm gonna try to get to these trees over here seems like where all the action is happening but yeah with the uh, yeah this game so let's say game in quotes is the idea that it's for you to take a step back and just maybe have this moment of time to think I suppose about what it means to be let's see what backwards oh i see what uh, what it means to be well what's what's double tap hold on i keep getting distracted well it doesn't do anything when i double mouse it anyways oh i see you can double mouse it and then turn your camera around while they, while they walk that's pretty cool yeah so it's just taking a moment to think i think and i think that's the point of this experience i will call it more than a game 
It's just that uh, games are often about just a lot of very manic things. That is definitely not only a helmet, that is a body. I'm gonna sit and spend some time with this body. I saw the trailer for this and I know that when you sit you get these little spirally motions around you. I don't know what they do, but Oh this is oh I see. So like plants start growing around you when you sit down and relax and chill. I think it's like sort of I don't know, ex accepting the finality of, like, what if you crash landed on an alien planet? And this is it. This, this, these, these were the last moments you had. What would, what would you do? Would you wander around the landscape and, and panic about the fact that, that's it, these are your last moments? Or do you, I don't know, do you sightsee peacefully with your 36% oxygen left and just accept the fact that this is going to be the last experience you take in before you pass away. So the next thing I want to point out is the idea of the networked experience. And when I opened up the text file of this game, I changed the words up a little bit. It says, it says a, a multiplayer game about death and acceptance. Explore an alien world, become one with nature, contemplate your existence. That's it, that's what the game is about. So I will say, it's uh, the network part of it is making me wonder about how is this networked, right? And I don't know, I'm seeing the dead bodies around, I'm seeing the helmets, and I sort of saw a comment in one of the, in one of the back and forths about the game, and it, it did say, Oh, look at that one right over there, just like in the middle of nowhere. It did say that, you know, you're going to die. Just, it's something about sitting down and enjoying your last moments. And that's part of the network experience. Is my, my What I took from that is that these, like this right, this person right here, they sort of just kept walking instead of just chilling and accepting their accepting what was going to happen and so what's going to happen here in my playthrough oh is i'm feeling it right now so i'm just going to stop now i'm going to sit down and hopefully i still got time to chill and accept my fate i remember like years ago 10 15 years ago when i was in my yeah just early when i when i learned how to drive and stuff i used to do this thing where i used to always what well, it's not a afraid of driving but I always worried about accidentally dying on the road for whatever reason and so I can kind of well I this didn't do what I anticipated I'm seeing the swirls but they said something happens I'm seeing darkness okay so here we go with life number two <laughs> and this time around I'm going to give Mr. Astronaut a little bit more time to just sit and oh, I see your pod blows up or something yeah I'm going to give him more time to relax and chill and I was, I was saying something about the idea that yeah when I was younger I used to drive and worry about like here's like here's a, a strange event I would think about when driving under bridges I would have this OCD compulsion to visualize for some reason and maybe because I heard stories and I know that this happened in my town where someone throws like a brick off of a bridge when you're driving under it and I had this OCD where I'd always look up at the bridge and so when I drove with people I always said this out loud just so that everyone knew that this was in my thoughts and there was no real rhyme or reason for it but I, I did it all the time it was um, very strange and another scenario when driving is when I pass semi-trucks, I get this, uh, again, almost compulsive wave comes over me where I, ima like, I imagine, I don't, like, I, I've, I've explained this to people where I'll contemplate, like, what if one of these wheels blew up beside me? What if, 
this what if the driver fell asleep at the wheel and this semi went out of control and and cut me off right now and it'd be done it'd be done my life would be over within seconds and it would make me just think about the mortality of it all and i definitely you'd think that that I don't know, it would make, make me afraid of driving. I, like, legitimately, I do pass semi-trucks still today, <laughs> over a decade later. I will pass, even if I have to speed. I've gotten a ticket by speeding past a semi-truck. I, I do not like being beside semi-trucks. I don't like anything about it. Um, and I think it stems from... I think I'm, this walk is going to be hella long, but I'm going to go for I'm going to go for that lonely little uh, grove over there. But yeah, anyways, I, um, yeah, so the point of this story, though, is that for me, just thinking about that stuff uh, and, and it being on the road and whatnot, it's funny because two years ago, right before starting this YouTube channel, I took a massive road trip. I just picked up and left, and I drove out west. It was uh, 18 days on the road. My radio had broken. Um, so I pretty much drove in silence the whole time and for me, I, I love road tripping, I love being in car, I love driving, especially into areas that I'm unfamiliar with and um, and I had some of those experiences on the road as you could imagine I was on the main highway strip across Canada, across the prairies and all you got is semi trucks and a lot of open space and I just thought a lot about everything and I think you know for a lot of people like thinking about death from time to time it's just something people do like on occasion you know and I think if you let it kind of bother you then yeah maybe there's like some bigger problems and <laughs> I'm sure it generates a great deal of oh take helmet off look at that I'm sure it generates a great deal of anxiety for, for folks right and for me it's not so much that it generated anxiety as it made me wonder not wonder it made me aware that death was inevitable and it sounds corny to say but I, I read a lot of um, and, I, and I studied philosophy quite a bit and I've always loved the idea of what went into just the thinking behind existentialism and again this sounds corny but to me it's when you understand the finite the finiteness of your existence you really do get a chance to step back and realize that a lot of these a lot of things that happen in your life are small things they're small things because when it's over what were what would be the meaning of these things that you get all hung up about and afraid of and these chances you don't take and so for me it's always been a catalyst for me to take chances for me to if i have an idea i go for it and that's been after that road trip across canada i really did want to return back and reinvigorate myself on like executing on ideas again and YouTube was one of those venues for me it was one of those spaces that I could say yes I'm going to do this because I've been thinking about it for so long and why wouldn't I try it you know why what am I afraid of if I just try it and I fail then so what maybe I learned some lessons and I do something else and this informs everything that comes after it so nothing is lost no no, ch no challenges that you fail at are lost experiences. So yeah, I um, that road trip definitely just kind of brought everything full circle. And I would love to take more of those kinds of road trips. At least once a year I would like to do it. I think it's healthy for anyone to sort of escape once in a while and realize that you don't have to be stuck in whatever system you've defined you should be stuck in. No one needs to be stuck in any system. You can do whatever you want. You're really in control of whatever you want. And the limiter is just the fear, right? So just, just go for it. When you have ideas, just go for it. Have have a plan or have make 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 to be honest make good connections with people so that all of a sudden that fear goes away because you have a good support network around you for if things go sideways on you and and just uh gives you that opportunity to bounce back but at the end of the day it is really you got this one moment so i mean if you landed on a planet if you crash landed on a planet you got two minutes to live would you be stressed out and walking around until you collapse or would you just say 
All right. I've had a life. I've had a life. Whether it was a good life or a bad life, that ultimately was up to you. And so here's your opportunity to just say, I accept things and I've, I've lived a good life. And you hope to get to the point where you can say that when you got two minutes to live. So with that, I am going to take off this helmet. That was deep enough for this episode, for this channel. But it is stuff that I do think about. It is how this channel started. It was that road trip. Uh, those videos are gone now because I intend to do them again. But that's it, guys. With that, I will see what happens when you take off a helmet and come to peace with things. Oh, don't put the tree in front of me. That, that sucks. Let me see what happens to my dude. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I guess I am. Right by this other dude. So here's that pseudo part I was talking about. Oh, snap. Oh, interesting. Okay, then. Oh, you make it larger. Oh, I'm glad they didn't spoil it completely in those comments. Okay, that's fun. I mean, it's not fun. This is morose as all hell. But I mean, I think the loading at the beginning is literally just grabbing data for where all, where all past astronauts have perished. And whether or not... Oh, look at that. So if you perish in at peace, you leave your helmet behind. And that's the indicator that you've become the Grove. Whereas the body right beside me there with the black helmet, I think it's that they didn't come to terms with it. And they wandered until they passed away. And so they didn't give anything back. They didn't sacrifice the life to bring life to this alien world. Very existential. Like I, like I said, this game is is pretty much what it's all about and i'll go a little bit further with just on the wrap up here it, this is uh this game is by paul clarisau with music by mark sky i hope i said that right mark sky and it's created with the sport of co-op it's ko underscore op and i looked that up as well and it's, it's this artist run and own studio it was founded in 2012 and uh they've been experimenting with games and interactive art ever since and they established this thing called a collab fund they call it a small stipend for outside artists to make games with these meager funds <laughs> games like this i suppose and i will say go to their website it's ko-opmode.com and they have a bunch of other games there art games i would call them uh, probably more that i would feature here i would at least i'm very curious about seeing them for myself but uh, it's definitely another site that I'll visit from time to time and, and see what they're up to. I love things like this. I really do. I think video games can be art, and they, they are art. The craft just becomes another tool, another paintbrush, and another pen to paper. It's just another medium to express an idea. So enjoy this game. It's very short. It's pay what you want. Download free. Give them money. I got this as part of a $20 hurricane relief fund package of 50 games and media, and I don't regret it already. So with that, I will say, don't forget to explore, engage, and inspire, everybody. Peace.